And we figured that you were kind of right up our alley since our focus is sort of on like the romantic side of, of geekdom and, and all of that. So this project and, you know, we're huge, you know, Joss fans ourselves, so we're fans of Amy and Fran. And so that was exciting in itself. And then when they're a married couple and, you know, you're a married dude writing it, it just kind of, it seemed like what well, something we should take part in. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the, the uh, romantic partnership of Pete them like going, yeah. Awesome. Right. Awesome. Okay, so I know you uh, discussed some of this with her last night, but where did the idea for this particular film come from? Yeah, uh, it. I really, really just took it right out of reality that what you kind of see in the movie is pretty much what happened. I just came home from a concert, uh, my favorite band, the Chili Peppers, and uh, then it was just like, hey, let's play some Settlers of Catan, honey. And so we play on the iPad. Because, you know, if you, you know, on the board, you need a group of people. Although they have the new expansion where it is a two, a way to play with two people, but I haven't tried that yet. Uh, but so we just play on the iPad. And uh, then, uh, you know, things got a little crazy. Trash was talked. Trades were rejected. And... Uh, and, yeah, I, I had been looking for a short film that was kind of contained that I could film, and uh, and it just hit me, oh, wait, I can just do this. Uh, so I wrote the script the next day. Um, yeah, that's pretty much where it came from. How much of it is, uh, of the final version, is based on actual events, and how much of it was sort of embellished or sort of created to make it more entertaining? Uh don't want to get you in trouble with your wife or anything, but... Uh. Well, no, I, yeah, I was... At one point, when I was writing and rewriting, you know, I was looking for the details of the characters' lives, and uh, I had a few things, and then I ended up, like, kind of coming back to just taking things from our life, and I went to my wife and was like, is it cool that I'm just, like, taking stuff and just putting it out there for everyone? And she's like, yeah, you know, write what you know. Usually... You know, I, I don't believe in that. I'm more like, no, write about space aliens and, uh, uh, you know, Ragnarok. But um, uh, in this case, it, it made sense. Um, but, uh, I mean, the details, I don't know, it's just sort of the kind of the rhythm and the... Um, there's like this sort of friendly, uh, you know, combativeness combativeness that um, otherwise might sound like you know, they actually like hate each other, but there's love in, in the words. Um, uh, so it's just those sort of things, I guess. Um, and then just well, actually, yeah, I did I do use my handle uh, that I use for the game uh, for one of the char for the male character which is penis. Just giving away one one of the big jokes, but yeah, <laughs> no, I, I, I don't want to give away anything from the ending. So, uh, and the the her costume, her pajamas were kind of just taken from my wife. Um, she, uh, but we ended up getting a little different ones. But yeah, you know, just costumes and the rhythm of their, the way they interact and the. Just uh, details, some of the details of their lives. And I guess, yeah, a few of the things they fight about. Like, I may have switched around who was, like, fighting with who. Like, what the issues were. But I was like, oh, there's a little bit of reality there, so. Cool, cool. So, what was the first day of filming like for you? What, did everything come together perfectly, or? I mean, I was, uh... Not sure uh, how I would feel getting back to set after such a, a long time. It had been a few years since I directed anything, and nothing of this scope. Um, and it was a four-day shoot, but once I got on set, uh, I was just like, I loved it, uh, everything. I don't know, I guess I, I just, I'm an egomaniacal bastard, and like being able to just, you know, be the guy saying what I want to try and get. Um, I mean... In retrospect, uh, I think probably I was still kind of warming up uh, in terms of you know how I interact with the actors and giving direction, um, and so you know it was definitely uh, sort of a journey that was different each day. 
Um, but we moved pretty quickly that first day and got everything we wanted to get, um, except for this one shot, you know, that just never was co cooperating. Um, uh, but uh, it, it went pretty smoothly. I mean, when you're dealing with Amy and Fran, they're so good that uh, it, you kind of don't have to worry too much that, you know, that they'll bring some awesome stuff. Um, that was like at rehearsal. I was like, Oh, I, we need to like have all this time to like go over everything. And then it was like an hour, hour 15 minutes. And they just ran through the script. And I was like, Oh yeah, that actually worked. I, I had all these other things that I wrote these things, these notes, these other lines. I didn't wasn't sure if this line would work, but like they totally made it work. So. Were there any, like, near disasters, or did everything, everything just kind of fell together in the end? Um, let's see. Well, on day, uh, day th three, I think, uh, we were using uh, a jib and a rotating head and a dolly, uh, all in conjunction to get some complex shots. And I discovered that when you have more than one person doing multiple jobs to try and get a shot, uh, it's really difficult to coordinate everything. Uh, and so some of the shots uh, we had to, or one in particular, I always knew uh, was going to be tricky because actually my neighbor just shot a short and the guy, his DP uh, was a camera operator on Children of Men. And so I was like, hey, can you look at my storyboards? You know, give me any ideas on how I can shoot this stuff. And he saw this one shot, and he was like, ooh, that one's going to be tough. And he was right. Uh, we ended up uh, calling an audible and changing it the day of. Um, but what we changed it to, I think, still totally works for, you know, the spirit of what the scene should be in the shot. The other uh, only uh, kind of uh, close call was uh, on the last day. There was a... Um, a, a practical effect we had to do. Uh, and we only, we were shooting from sundown until basically 3 a.m., uh, at which point we were going to, you know, lose uh, the actors and everybody and just, hey, we had to wrap, we had to be out there. And it was about midnight and the practical still hadn't really worked and we had to break for food. And so we basically had three hours to shoot that and the rest of the scene. But then it worked as soon as we came back from eating, and then the rest of the scene just went quick and smooth. So, it just, you know, there's, like, tension when things are going a little behind or whatever. But then every once in a while I remember, particularly on that, that day when I was talking about the jib and that complex shot, um, uh, you know, it was like, oh, man, we're behind. These shots are taking forever. But then we ended up doing this shot uh, with Amy and Fran, where the camera was just supposed to switch between them a couple times, um, and I was just going to get a couple of lines from that, but they were so good, and they were like, let's just run the whole scene, and like their, what they did with that was so good that it, you could just feel that it revitalized the set, like everybody, like, could feel how good, like, what they were doing was, so that, that was pretty cool. Now, you're talking a lot about how good they were. Why specifically Fran and Amy? Are you, were you a Joss person, or did you know them through something else? No, I mean, I'm a Joss person. I mean, my wife is the one that introduced me to all things Joss. She also introduced me to uh, Sandman and Neil Gaiman and got me back into comic books. So really, she's the reason for anything cool that I like, uh, except for Star Trek. Except for Star Trek. Um, but the... <laughs> Farscape? <laughs> um, okay, yeah, um, wait, what was the question? <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, yeah, Um, uh, well, when I was, uh, looking for, uh, producers to help me out and hook up with, um, I was talking to, uh, this one guy, Jason, uh, Jason Dolan, who ended up uh, being one of the producers. And he was like, so what about Fran Kranz? And I was like, oh, my gosh, yes. I, like, that's, I didn't have anybody in mind. I had this, like, vague image of a, of a person, and I realized, wait, no, it was Fran all along. Like, that's, like, totally who it should be. 
Uh, and so then we got Fran, and uh, then from there, it, you know, it was just kind of a quick step to, okay, who are other awesome Joss people? Uh, and so then you end up with uh, Miss Amy Acker. Yeah. So how did you, I know in the um, the description you said that there was lots of lies and deception to get them on board. How did you actually go about getting them on board? I mean, was it just like a cell phone call and they said yes? Or did... Uh, <laughs> that's the that's the $10,000 Kickstarter backer package. You get Amy and Rand's phone number. <laughs> no, um, uh, Jason is friends with Fran, so he was able to, uh, personally sent him the script, and then we met and talked about the movie. And, uh, and uh, I don't believe there were any particular lies or deceptions to get him on board. I, I guess I, I did tell him we'll, we would aim for a three-day shoot, always knowing it was probably going to be a four-day shoot. <laughs> um, and Amy, um, you know, we were just, uh, that was just like uh, the other producer, Lisa's, uh, husband Garrett, uh, he was a casting director on Dollhouse, uh, so uh, he was familiar with her and uh, got the script to, uh, to her people and to her, and, uh, and just luckily uh, she had the time and the inclination, uh, and so uh, I don't think anybody really had a good conception of exactly what they were signing up for. Um, because the script reads very much like something you could shoot in a day or two. Uh, it would be like a little funnier die video, and you have like five shots. And you could shoot it that way, but I wanted to shoot it in this epic, maniacal, like, everybody's like, okay, wait, why do you need four days? Why is it going to cost this much money? <laughs> so. <laughs> is this something that's generally kind of their usual element? Like, is there a that you got The characters, you mean? Yeah. Um, uh, they don't, no, they, I don't think they get to this place of, of this kind of fighting really ever. Um, this is all, I mean, they, she's, the, she's definitely fiery. She's volatile, uh, and he's a man-child, and he, I, I told him, I think I told him, maybe not. And maybe I just wrote this for myself, but I, I told Fran, I imagined, uh, you know, he was the youngest of, like, uh, three siblings, and he had, like, two older sisters that, what, like, always beat him up when he was a kid. If it weren't for the game that takes them into this other realm that makes all these feelings explode like a volcano, um, you know, th these are things that would be boiling under the surface, and there might be some, uh, you know, uh, hidden aggression and passive aggression, uh, <laughs> Uh, more passive on his side, more active on her side, but in terms of the screaming and the yelling and the chaos, uh, that's just, that's the concept of the film and the idea that this, this game uh, has a power of its own and it's kind of a demon that possesses them. So if the budget had been, you know, more or less unlimited, would this have been different? Would you have put them in space playing Catan, or, or what, would have, what would have been different if you had all the funds for it? Um, I mean, I probably would have gone even farther with some of the production design, um, just in terms of building out uh, their world. Um, I mean, we, we went pretty hardcore with it, but um, cons especially considering the empty space we started with. Um, I mean, let's see, there was, I mean, well, we would have had a techno crane, um, which probably would have made a few things go smoother. Uh, you know, it was just like some technical things where it was like, you know, well, for an extra $5,000, we could have this one, or we could have this one that'll do just as well, pretty much. So a lot of times we would just go with the, the one that'll be just as well, pretty much. Um... Uh, but I, 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 I was pretty much, like, not compromising a lot in terms of what I wanted. And if, if I needed, if I wanted something, and I, was, I, I just pretty much was like, no, I need this, I have to get it. Um, it, it might have been, you know, the location, who knows, that could have been different. Uh, we were looking at another place 
this really nice loft, but it was really expensive. And But I was thinking, like, you know, I don't know that the film would have uh, ended up, or the events of the film would be the same if they were in a different living space. Because where we shot it, uh, it's kind of got this bohemian vibe to it. Uh, it's a little bit of like an industrial loft space that we then brought some life to. Um, and I feel like it was as if she moved into his space. And if we had gone to like a nicer place, it would have been him moving into her space. And that would totally change the dynamic of their relationship. So, um, exactly. And, and so, you know, it's like, you know, it, it's like my apartment when I moved out of college was absurd. Like, you couldn't walk anywhere. I, I had though I had this awesome mural of like this googly eyed monster w opening his mouth to hell, and uh, I think it said "Welcome to Hell" over my bed. But <laughs> but I was like, you know, I, I don't think my wife could have taken that for too long. <laughs> what games outside of Settlers of Catan do you think would have worked just as well for the idea that you wanted to convey? Huh. Interesting. I mean, whew. I mean, I've heard some things of some other games that I haven't tried that people recommend. Uh, but I mean, Risk. Uh, I mean, hmm. I'm trying to think. I mean, Game of Things. Maybe you'd need a bigger crowd for that, though. Um. I don't know. I, I, I'm pretty much a Catan guy. Uh, <laughs> I now have this that like four foot mural uh, that I used in the Kickstarter video that I'm just like dying to get a giant group around to play. Now, what is the meanest thing you've done in 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 a game? Uh, I mean, you know, uh, blocking a road or just like constantly putting the robber on someone over and over relentlessly. Uh, it's pretty fun. <laughs> now, have you had these yelling matches? Have you you taken on Fran or or Amy's role against your wife in this? As far as you know, she's beating you, or it's not going how you want, or whatever. Yeah, I mean, we never necessarily get to that level, but yeah, it, it gets it gets pretty tense. Uh, some the iPad gets thrown a little bit. Uh, yeah. People generally, especially recently, with like the Veronica Mars project and stuff, we see a lot of people go to Kickstarter or Indiegogo or those type of sites to get the funds to create the movie from the get-go. What made you decide to initially fund it yourself and only go to that site for post-production costs? Um, well, basically, just reality check. I was like, I, I saw, like, things like Veronica Mars and Amanda Palmer and Neil Gaiman, and it's like, I mean, these, you have to have a fan base already to really be successful in reaching your goal, I think, and so when it was just me, it was like, well, I don't think this is, I mean, maybe it would work, maybe, but I, I thought it would be an uphill battle, and so it was like, once I had Fran and Amy, I knew, like, okay, I, I think I can get, you know, some fans behind this. Um, but it was a matter of, like, I had Fran for a while, and I couldn't put it up with just Fran. I needed the actress there, too, and then by the time we had all the pieces together, um, I mean, we were pretty close to our shooting date, so, uh, it made more sense to shoot it, uh, go broke, and then ask for help, uh, to finish. Was there any point where you were really afraid that the movie would actually not get finished and you would have literally just sort of been out there barbecuing $100 bills like you were in the video and it just wasn't going to come to fruition? Well, initially, I tried to make it last year, um, and I had I called up some of, uh, I guess I thought he was a friend, <laughs> someone who had produced um, a, a short that I had uh, made in the past, or that I wrote in the past and someone else directed. Uh, and I was like, hey, do you want to help me 
you know, will you produce this? And he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm flattered. I'd love to. Um, and then he discovered how much work it was going to be and how crazy I wanted to get with this. Uh, and it was, I mean, it, to his credit, you know, he was like, no, nah, well, eventually <laughs> he said, oh, no, it's too much, man. And, I, and so I had to step off and I was like, okay, I was scrambling for another producer and, I, I was like, oh, man, it sucked. I was, like, pacing around my apartment. It's like, it, it ended up with, like, I would have to do a lot of the production stuff that a producer should do myself, uh, which is just, uh, you know, it's doable. It's just, it's not my thing. Uh, I just, it makes me so, so neurotic. So then I was like, okay, let's put it on hold. Uh, let's approach it right, make sure we do it right. And then uh, after I had finished, I had to do some other projects, some time freed up again, and I was like, okay, now it's time to do it. Um, so, I mean, that that was when mostly it, it seemed like it might not happen. Um, I mean, uh, and then just, you know, until Amy came, on, came aboard, you know, it's, it was still very much a question of, like, what's our cast, you know, um, and, uh, uh, but, you know, other than that, uh, no, I, I don't think I ever questioned whether we would be able to finish it. So what is, what do you want people to be able to take from this, whether they're married, single, whatever the case may be in their current situation, what do you expect people to take from this movie? I mean, for me, it's, I guess it's just, about the joy of fighting, uh, which is strange. Uh, if there's, I don't know, if there's a way, I guess, to, you know, there's no question you're going to have, you know, conflicts with your significant other. Um, but I guess it's just like, you know, try and keep it in perspective and like, like Catan, like, you know, it's a serious affair, but it's still fun. Like, so, I don't know, try not to, uh, uh, reach the level that Fran and Amy reach, but, you know, keep a, a, a healthy, a healthy, uh, you know, uh, venting of emotions through a game like Catan, I, th I think can be a good thing for people. So, um, feel free to hate each other with love. <laughs> so, if, if Lord of Catan or Catan does well, what is your next step from here? What do you think your next project will be? I mean, there's a bunch of things I'm working on, but I mean, the one that I probably am most kind of invested in is this thing I've been working on. I mean, I've been working on it for years, and I'll probably be working on it forever. Uh, it's just, you know, it's that one. Um, it's a, it's called Bushido 44, and it's a modern uh, samurai movie, and... Uh, what happened was, I mean, I've been working on it as a comic project and some speed bumps along the way, difficulties there with uh, some stuff. Uh, but uh, after the shoot uh, with Catan, I got home, and for some of the footage, we, we were using a GoPro, you know, this tiny little camera. Uh, and I was like, well, man, I have this thing now. What am I going to do with it? Uh, I'm going to put on my samurai sword. Uh, so actually, or, I'm gonna go show you. This is my uh, GoPro Samurai sword. Uh, so it has like it has these three GoPros on it, so you can uh, just catch all the samurai action from multiple angles. Uh, so that's kind of the next thing I, I would like to. I have a feature script for it. I need to rewrite it and make it more uh, filmable. Uh, but uh, I'd like to shoot uh, kind of the opening of that uh, as sort of a teaser and self-contained sort of short that I can then use to try and launch the feature. Uh, so that's kind of the, kind of the big thing. Uh, but the story with that is basically a, a modern... Uh, resurgence of the samurai takes over the uh, United States uh, and uh, kind of takes us back to the era of the Shogun, and it's about a, a kind of a American samurai who um, gets drawn into this uh, this plot to assassinate the Shogun. So uh, 
and he has a, a Bushido 44. It's basically Dirty Harry's gun uh, with uh, Zatoichi's sword on top. So this cool sword gun that you can, you know, if you can cut people and shoot them at the same time, it's all the more fun. Okay, so now do you have any plans, or do you know if Amy or Fran have any plans to come to any conventions this year or next year? I'm sh- I mean, I don't know about them, I'm sure, because, I mean, I know they're doing much to do stuff right now. Um, yeah, you know, I, I probably will. Uh, I hadn't thought about that. I, I, I had been doing, you know, some, some conventions, some Comic-Con and stuff, uh, for a while, but I got kind of burned out and I just needed to take a break. But with the film now, now that I have that to kind of, uh, go around and pimp and shove in people's faces, um, uh, I'll probably, yeah, start going around the convention circuit a little bit, yeah. Awesome. I think that is everything. You've answered all of our questions <laughs> and given us lots of fun information, so thank you so you, very much. Do you have anything else to, to leave us with, or your fans' future uh, or present? My favorite resource is sheep. Um, that's... <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, the sheep. Uh, the sheep... <laughs> I uh, I remember, so the guy came in, the sheep handler, and was like, okay, what do you need the sheep to do? And I'm like, stand there and be a sheep. Uh, so he was like, okay, I can do that. Uh, but he was like, you know, okay, we can tie its legs so it doesn't, uh, you know, run around. We can tie it to the bed. And I was like, no, let's just, let's let it roam free. Let's invite the chaos. Uh, and then, indeed, it started to, like, eat the set, and it pooped on the set. Uh he on set, uh, <laughs> and so then I was like, okay, less chaos. Let's uh, let's uh, like uh, tie it to the the bedpost, uh, so it's not running around trying to uh, eat the cameraman. Um, but the sheep was uh, the sheep was a good performer. Yeah. Awesome. Are we going to see any of the other uh, resources from the game sort of crop up as as legitimate props or? Uh, no. It's really just the the sheep was kind of uh, the one that I really felt strongly about. The others, uh, I wanted to not get too, I mean, it gets pretty kind of hallucinogenic and, you know, uh, into their minds and reality kind of warps a little bit. But uh, I still didn't want to get crazy with, like, now there is a pile of bricks behind them. I mean, I, I storyboarded it and I thought about it, but I was like, no, no, no. Uh, I want to keep it about them and like just make their emotions and the characters just be what we're watching. Okay, awesome. Do you have any advice to give to other people who might be wanting to put their ideas out there on the on the big screen or the little screen? Uh, just do it. Um, don't. Uh, I mean, obviously. Um, if you can raise money beforehand with Kickstarter, that is preferable than, uh, you know, emptying out your bank account probably. But, uh, you know, uh, there's something pure about uh, being stupid enough to uh, just spend money you don't have to uh, uh, make something. Um, you know, that, that's how some of you know the greatest people like we have now, you know, directors and just filmmakers get started. Um, but yeah, you know, don't try to go through the system just because the system is made to uh, destroy you and not to create uh, anything original or good uh, or pure. Uh, so just say what you want to say, make it, and, um, you know, hopefully it'll be good, but, you know, just keep trying. Uh, just do, yeah, just make stuff. Being Nerdly Weds, I know he said we were done. I'm not done. Um, being Nerdly Weds, we've got to ask, what what would your wife say, or what does she say about this whole process and, and everything that you've, you've brought to life here? I think she loves it. Um, I, I, unless, we'll, we'll see, maybe one night she'll just explode and my body will be lying on the floor. But, um, no, I think, uh, I don't know, I, I guess... I would like to think that she thinks it's romantic in her own way, maybe. I mean, I think it is, sort of. Um, 
But uh, she really, no, she likes the film. She helped out a ton with it. I mean, she's just, she's been there with me making it the entire time. She was like, I mean, she was there. She has seen me just like being frustrated with the studio system. And like, so she's completely supportive of like me making this myself. And so, yeah, she, she was totally on board. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, to talk with us, and we really look forward to seeing the film. The, the trailer looked like a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you.